And just like that, the fuel pump is in. Now we just got to wire it up and obviously plumb it. So now the obstacle is we got to cut this apart. This is the grommet that sticks through the cover plate. So obviously we're trying to keep this as factory as possible. So what we're going to need to do is pull the wire out of this, the factory wire. We're going to have to cut off the connector anyway. So we're going to pull this wire out. And then what we're going to do is make this hole a little bit bigger so that we can fish in our wiring to the pumps as well through this grommet. And then what we're going to need to do is route them back through here, back along here, right tucked under the seat, and then into the trunk uh, so that we can get to our battery relocation kit, which is in the back. So the way this is going to work is two relays for this pump because there's two pumps. And then, wow, that's a mess. And then one relay for the lift pump, which is now the factory location pump. I'm going to trigger all these relays off of the factory uh, power wire so that when the car requests the fuel pumps on, they all kick on. So I just snipped the end off. Here's the factory connector. That's for the level sensor. We're not going to need that where we're going. Now we're going to get a razor, cut this down, pull the grommet off. All right, so now, so here's our factory grommet. Um, obviously, that is not going to be big enough <laughs> to get a relay harness through. So we're going to take this, we're going to cut. Okay, so now we got a slightly bigger hole. I'm not going to cut it out all the way right now because we don't know how much wire we actually need to feed through there. Speaking of the wire going to the pumps, uh, this is the size right here. 10 gauge is ideal for what you want to run to fuel pumps and you want copper strand. You don't want that junk aluminized stuff. So. Here's what we know we're gonna need. We're gonna need a loop connector on every single one of these, right? So positive and negative, and we're gonna need two runs of it. So first things first is we're gonna have to go to the car and measure how much actual run that we're gonna need to our relay, wherever we decide to mount the relay. And then from the relay, how far we need to get to the battery. So for this, I like using mechanic wire. This is a used piece, but essentially I can touch the terminal and then I can run it around the seat through the trunk and I can see how long of a wire I actually need. Then when I cut the wire, I can just cut it right to the length of this mechanic wire. Oh, I forgot I was on the wrong side. So this is a good representation. I got the uh, mechanic wire routed. So it's got to plumb in through that cap because the solder joints are going to be on the inside there. Then it comes around, goes through into the trunk, into where I'm going to run the relay harnesses. So I got my length. Now I'm going to pull it out, and we'll get the appropriate length of wire cut for it. So we'll keep this simple here. Relay is very simple. Two wires, positive and negative, that are low amperage, almost no amperage. Their 12 volt circuit. The 12 volt circuit, when it's energized, plugs in the big circuit of the other two wires. We're gonna use the bigger heat shrink, so we'll get a couple of these out. Set them right there. As long as you have high quality butt connectors, like real ones, like this, you'll be just fine. I use the rod end to crimp both sides of it.
You guys get the idea. Professional looking harness there now. We're gonna keep going. So I got two of these Jags harness. So I'm just gonna label them. Keep them simple. So battery positive. This is ground. This one right here is, we'll write pump. So pump, obviously, positive feed for the pump. And then this yellow right here is the on. So this is the on signal. So two ways you can run a relay. You can either trigger it from the power side or you can trigger it from the ground side. So once this ground closes, if this has constant voltage, the relay kicks on. Or if you just have this grounded at all times and then it kicks power on, then it'll, it'll trigger the relay that way. So I got two JEGS harnesses for the two fuel pumps, uh, the two DWs. And then I have this, because the radium kit only came with one, so I'm going to use the radium kit to run my lift pump, which is an AEM320. So uh, what we're going to do is the feed that comes out of the car, which I believe is this guy right here. This is the on for this particular relay, this blue wire, is I'm going to loop all of these together. So they're all going to get fed by the on signal from the fuel pump which will then simultaneously kick all of the relays on and they'll be running at all times, which I'm fine with because we're not doing standalone with two stage and all this other stuff. First things first, if you want a clean wiring job, you gotta figure out how you're gonna mount the relays because then you can wire them all, you know, in parallel series, whatever, uh, while they're next to each other so that it's a nice clean look. So I'm going to find a bracket uh, that I can use for this application. And then we also gotta go pick up the battery uh, so that we can run them to the battery and get our links correct. All right, so got my bracket made. Bracket is right here. So I'm just a piece of pre-made angle steel that was for a shelf. Same thing I actually used to mount the battery tray. So now what we can start doing is wiring the stuff, um, not wiring, but routing the stuff appropriately to how it's gonna go to the battery. So an example of that is everything has gotta go right. So I can start routing these together. Same with the third one that plugs in as a harness uh, dedicated right to the battery. I can start routing the fuel pump ones together so that they have a nice transition through uh, the back of the trunk into the car. And then we're gonna take our grounds, we're gonna tie those in together at the battery so those can get routed together. Um, same with the triggers. So all three relays are gonna be on the same trigger. So I can wire these all together as well so that I can route that to the existing uh, on for the fuel pump. So update, here's what I got so far. So we got our main power harness to the battery. I forgot the JIGS kit had a uh, circuit breakers, but that's beside the point. So this will go to the battery. And then I got right and left just to kind of clean the wires up. Obviously it's not done. I still got some work to do, but these two purple wires are going to the twin pumps. These yellow wires, which is missing a third wire, are going to be triggered by the fuel pump on, or excuse me, the ground circuit. That's my fault. And then the other side is going to be the trigger for the fuel pump. And then this red wire that's running independently is going to go to the passenger side, which is the lift pump. So it's gonna look better when it's installed, but it's what I got so far. Just try to clean the wires up best I can. It'll mount on this little bracket 
right inside the trunk should all be tucked uh, the only thing that you'll see is just this part here and then some of the wrap before it gets tucked away so it'll be nice and clean but wiring is one of those things that's always time consuming well you hear that noise boom looking pretty good not only that if you look right there that is the relay assemb relays assembly for the three fuel pumps so i'd say it looks pretty good so now we get to deal with the mess of wiring here so we got our factory fuel pump uh, harness right here cover plate right there so what i'm doing and this is ran from the fuel pump relay harness is this wire right here this is going to be the new feed for the fuel pump so this is going to feed the power side so i'm going to have to splice it into this connector here this is now going to feed the power side on this particular uh, fuel pump and then the other thing that we got going on is this right here this is the ground side so the ground side is actually going to get grounded by the black obviously the black pin the ground for the actual fuel pump right and then our trigger side which is that light blue color and then the yellow the thin stuff that is going to be spliced into the power side before the fuel pump so essentially 12 volts going to come in it's going to be interrupted it's going to enter through the smaller wiring over there which is then going to kick on the three relays and the coil side of that circuit is going to be grounded by the same ground for the fuel pump and as a result this large power wire is what's going to actually power the fuel pump and then we're going to have to run where the ground is interrupted a dedicated chassis ground so that we got a good grounding contact for the fuel pump so we've got quite a mess going on here to say the least but now what i need to do is route all these over here i got them coming through both sides just for the sake of cleanliness because i wanted kind of that I don't know, tucked look where it's split. So obviously you got harnesses going either which way. We're going to fix this so that it looks better. But uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good, especially with that battery relocation. So we got the connector opened up here. Now we're going to have to cut into this and bypass the signal directly to the fuel pump and make our own signal so i just spent the last freaking 45 minutes trying to deep in this connector because i am not a pro at deep in connectors but i'm going to tap right into these existing connectors and splice in my big wire not the ideal way to do it but what i'm going to do is solder and then use this bigger portion as the crimp for the larger wire just so I can get contact on it. And then I will just put some RTV in as a weather seal. It'll work just fine. I'm not in a position where I have another connector with heavier gauge wire to rewire it. So I'd rather just get it done right now. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So you get to check out my lovely pant leg here. But here's what I did. So you cut the end off. Now I'm gonna mesh in this copper with the copper on this wire. And then I'm gonna crimp it with the large portion of it. And then I'm going to put some weather or uh, some heat shrink around it to seal it all. So that is how we're doing that, just in case you were curious. So it'll sit just like this, push back into the connector. We'll be good to go. And there's my horrible solder job, but it'll work and you won't see it when it's got the heat shrink on it.
Well, it's all finished up. Now I got to put some caulking around it. Not the best job in the world, but we got some bigger wire coming in. We didn't need this big a wire. I mean, it's a 320 or a 340. It's not like a massive pump, but that'll definitely help. We've got factory connections on the pins. And again, I beefed up the inside wiring through this piece as well. So I don't think we're going to run into any heat issues or anything crazy like that. This pump isn't going to have to work super hard because, again, it plums into a surge tank. So I think it turned out pretty good. Now I'm going to use RTV and seal this whole area. And then I'm going to wrap it with uh, uh, the weather, the ultra weather tape that kind of seals everything up just to be certain we don't ever get any water. That is a very, very tight fit. So you'd be hard pressed. So we got this side done. So again, that is the battery relocation power and ground feed. And then the ground side of the relays to the low circuit. And then a ground right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down to the actual pan of the car. The best stuff in the world, Owens Corning Home Seal. Uh, this is weather tape. You lay it in there, ultra sticky. It'll stay there through heat and cool weather. So I'll show you when it's done. All done. Looks pretty good. So this is just so everything doesn't move around. And then uh, basically what you can do is just roll the foam back over. So I'll go ahead and show you that. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead We'll get the seat cushion installed after we're done with that side, of course. But I am going to go ahead and set the back back in here just to make some space. But we got to vacuum that up first. Well, good morning. The sun's not even out yet. But we're going to go ahead and finish up the wiring. Got that side done, obviously. So this side... We're going to use this, utilize the same thing. We're going to use that cover. We're going to use the grommet. We're going to send these wires in a loom through the grommet with the level sensor harness. And that way, it'll all be a tucked OEM style finish on it. So first thing you want to do is mock up your cover. So we're going to come in at this particular angle. Just need to make sure you got enough wire, which I pre-measured, so we do. This will reach all the terminals, but that, to me, looks like a good spot. I think we need a little bit more slack, so we'll pull these back just a hair. But you mock it up, then take the cover off, because the terminal ends will fit through this. They will not fit through the grommet if you got a tight seal like I do. So, we'll add a little bit more slack here. Then we'll go ahead, we'll get all our terminal ends on. Then we got to test it. So, harness is complete. So, we got pump one, terminal ends. And then we got pump two, terminal ends. And then we have the level sensor. It's also got the terminal ends on it. So at this point, we could send everything through, mount the cover, good to go. But the most important part about doing the fuel system right is testing it beforehand. So we know that one's already plugged in. So we're going to start and we're going to test the lift pump. Then we're going to individually test each of these pumps. And really the test is simple. The test is let's put power and ground to it for a very brief period of time. We should be able to hear the pump spin. So being that they're all wired on the same relay, the important part's gonna be not to have these pumps hooked up and to disconnect the pumps as you go. So in this particular case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave these unplugged 
Now what I'm going to want to do is get all the, the power supplies, so all these, get these away from anything that's going to touch ground because we don't want them grounding out if all the relays energize. So I'm gonna go ahead, wrap these ends in some electrical tape, set them back down. Then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna apply, and you'll see I only have one relay plugged in right now. So that's the beauty of this. The one relay is the lift pump, the one that's in the OEM side of the basket. Then we're gonna plug one relay in, figure out which relay uh, that sends power to so that we can label the actual relay one and two, depending on which one it actually sends power to. It's early, give me a break. I'm not even gonna edit this out because even guys like me do stupid stuff. And <laughs> the reason the pump's not working is because I never installed the fuse. <laughs> So I got the fuse harness behind this little black cover behind the battery. Uh, so no, of course it's not working because it's got no power coming into it. So I was just <laughs> getting all my test equipment out because I was going to test the pump. But we're going to go ahead and install the fuse. It should kick right on. All right, let's go ahead and try that again. Pump one, or in other words, the lift pump. So the OEM location pump works. So now we're gonna pull the fuse for that, <laughs> like it was a second ago. And then we're gonna go ahead and test pump number one. We're gonna figure out what relay runs number one. And then I'll put a little Sharpie mark on it or something. All right, so pump one, pump one is hooked up. Now, because all these relays are wired in series, um, this should kick on one of the pumps. Yep. Okay, so there's relay, relay one for pump one. So that's actually pretty easy to remember, just like reading a book. One is on the left, second uh, comes after that, which is on the right. So nice and simple. Now we're going to go ahead and, well, go ahead and pull this relay. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this relay out, plug in the other relay, but first wire in the second pump and then that should kick on. Cool. Pump number two. No, well, might help if the battery's connected. Perfect. Now we should hear what it sounds like with two pumps. Gonna be nice and loud. Nice. And now with three pumps. Wow, that's going to be loud. That's all right, though. Horsepower. So, now I get to disconnect all those and put the cover on. Fun. I don't know about you. I'd say that's a job well done. Well, almost looks factory in a sense, but... The only thing is the noise, obviously, when you... Uh, cycle the ignition you're gonna know it's not factory but regardless i think i did a decent job on it so now that we're done with the fuel system it's a huge relief because fuel system takes a long time to do it right i mean you can just slap wires together but even if you do it that way you're gonna be a few hours no matter how you cut it so in this particular case we had to modify the oem basket 
We had to install the radium basket, and then we had to wire all three pumps, and they're wired into the factory uh, electrical system for the fuel. So all in all, I'm satisfied it's done. Uh, if you guys have fuel system questions, uh, whether it's a G37, whether it's a LS platform, whether it's whatever, uh, you feel free to leave a comment because as far as electrical stuff goes, I actually enjoy electrical stuff and uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm fairly knowledgeable on it. So if you got any questions, leave them below. Uh, that's going to wrap this video up. Like I said, glad to have the fuel system done. Like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment. Like I said, have a good day. We'll see you.